1 Timothy. I believe. No, it's 2 Timothy, I think. Yeah, 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. In verse 1, is everybody there? But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. Are we in perilous times? Yeah. Let me tell you, it's going to increase. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders without self-control, Brutal despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Sounds like the Democratic Party. <clears throat> Having a form of godliness was definitely them. But denying its power. We are in such a fight, it's incredible. And it's getting worse and worse every single day. And, you know, we, we've always been told, I remember as a, Beginning believer, I'll just don't get involved in politics. Well, that's plumb dumb. If we were involved in politics, we wouldn't be where we are now. Yeah, right, right. Remember, there's a battle over government. It's a battle over government. What government do you want to rule? <clears throat> I'd rather have God's government rule. Amen. Amen. This is the battle. What is the prayer that Jesus gave to, the, to them? To help or give him a guideline. Your kingdom come and your will be done. Hello, what's your kingdom? It's his government. On earth as it is in heaven. So there is a tremendous fight. And people have no idea what's going on. They've been taken captive under the spell of the Luciferian left agenda. Promotion of things that God disapproves of. And they call themselves Christ-like that's what a Christian is, to be Christ-like. That means you better approve of what God approves of than disapprove of what God disapproves of, or you ain't a Christian. You're a wolf in sheep's clothing, and that's plain and simple. You're either with him or against him, and you can't sit on the fence because the devil owns the fence. Amen? They're having a form of godliness, but denying his power, and it says, from such people, turn away. Stay away. Why? Because there's going to be an unevenly yoked connection. There's going to be a connection. And it's going to cause an influence to you. Does everybody understand that? It causes an influence to us. And we want to avoid all of these demonic influences. It doesn't mean you won't see them. It doesn't mean you don't work with them. It doesn't mean whatever. It doesn't mean you hate them. Does everybody get it? Amen. We love everyone. I don't like what's in them. I don't like what is pushing them and promoting them. Because we fight not physical, we fight spiritual. So we go from the physical through into the spiritual, and that's where you and I fight. We do not fight physically. Well, sometimes you might like to, but you're not supposed to. Psalm 62. Hallelujah. Psalm 62. We're going to talk about breaking the power of evil today. Breaking the power of evil. Evil and its influences. Remember, what is sin? Sin is S-I-N, right? Satan's influencing network. <laughs> it's his influential network. And sins is Satan's influencing network system. He's the ruler of this earth, isn't he? Amen. God owns it, but Satan still rules it. 
Thank God for Jesus. He came and took power and dominion away from him and gave it to us. But there are those who still are unplugged from the earth. They're still not unplugged from the world. Even though they call themselves Christians, they're still plugged in according to the ways of the world and traditions of men. In Psalm 62, in verse 1, let's speak it together. Hear my cry, O God, and attend to my... Oh, that's one, sorry. Truly my soul silently waits for God. From him comes my what? Salvation. salvation. He only is my rock and my salvation. Do you hear that? He only. What a confession. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. This was a confession. I was, so you got to remember something. He was confessing this because he was going through stuff. It's amount, uh, how many people start going through stuff and they just go into the woe is me state of being. They run the phones instead of the throne. They don't take the word of God and use the confession to break things. Amen. Verse 3. How long will you attack a man? You shall be slain, all of you, like a leaning wall and a tottering fence. Who's he speaking against? The powers of darkness. They only consult to cast him down from his high position. They delight in lies. They bless with their mouth, but they curse inwardly. My soul waits silently for God alone. For my what? Expectation is from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. I love this. And God is my salvation and my glory. The rock of my strength and my refuge is in God. Trust in him at what? All times. You people, pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Now there's something important here. He says, maintaining your trust. Maintaining connection to him in relationship. And here's your expectations. From him. When you put your expectation in anything else, you lost it. Well, I'm expecting this to happen. I'm expecting this to happen. My expectations is in him. Only he can make it happen. Does everybody get it? See, when you're expecting something in everything else but him, it doesn't, it always messes up. Or you get a false expectation and it leads you down the wrong path. Because people aren't willing to wait on God to build. Most people want drive through because we've been brought up in a drive through world. Not willing to wait on the Lord to bring it to pass. So they go out, and the first thing they do is they get themselves in debt because they're not willing to wait. Or they go out and they purchase the wrong thing. Or they go out and they want to get married because they actually want sex. That's all they want. They really don't care who they marry. And they marry anyone, and then boom, all kinds of problems happen. Or they do something out of God's timing. Because the enemy pushes, but the Holy Spirit leads, and they're not willing to wait and allow the Lord to build the house. Is everybody okay? Again, you and I must maintain our relationship in the Lord, the connection of his presence, and our expectations must be in him and nothing else. Amen. This is the beginning of power, breaking the power of evil. Because if you're not in that place, how can you break the power of evil? Because if you don't have power, you can't break it. And Hosea 4, 6 it tells us that my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. You can just write it down. We've been there enough times. My people are destroyed for lack of understanding that there is an evil influence. The first thing you and I got to have an understanding of everything that's going on, anything that's happening is always influenced by evil. Sickness, disease, everything is influenced by evil. Does God use evil? Amen, he will. In fact, he's going to use it in the revelation. <laughs> everything works for dad. He's got the last say of everything. That's why he came and paid the price for me and you to have dominion. But the people are still connected to things that prevent the power to flow and the dominion 
to be established. We must be unplugged totally from the ways of the world. Not through knowledge, but being, by being unplugged from evil things. This is what I'm talking about. Evil things. In Proverbs 16, Oh, hallelujah. Breaking the power of evil. You first got to recognize that there is an evil. You know, many believers still don't, there's a lot of Christians still don't believe in demons. And they're loaded with them. They have no idea. They still don't get it. They still are those who still don't believe in heaven or hell. They still don't believe that drugs and, and all kinds of stuff are influenced by demonic forces. They still don't believe in accursed items. They still don't believe in these things. And they wonder why they're not going where they're supposed to or being free where they're supposed to be free. In Proverbs 16, verse 16. sixteen, sixteen. How much better to get wisdom than gold? This is God's wisdom, not worldly wisdom. To get understanding is to be chosen rather than silver. So he's saying, look at you would, the best thing that you can do is have the wisdom and understanding from the Lord. Wisdom tells you what to do. Understanding tells you how to do it. Verse 18, it says, Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Better to be of a humble spirit than with the lonely, than with the divide the spoil with the proud. So we see pride is an area that breaks the flow and the power of God. People fall into pride when they put their own belief systems before what Christ says. It says, verse 17, the highway of the upright is the what? Depart from evil. He who keeps his way preserves his what? Soul. Many don't even depart from evil because they don't even know it's evil. They just think, it's, oh, it's okay. They have no idea that it's evil. You can't pet evil. You can't compromise evil. Evil is evil in all kinds of forms. In 2 John. <clears throat> Second John. It's after 1 John. In verse 9, let's speak. Whoever transgresses and does not abide in the doctrine of Christ does not have God. Now, you've got to grab hold of this because this is essential. Whoever does not abide in this doctrine, whoever does not abide in what the Holy Spirit says, because that's the doctrine of God, when God speaks, it becomes a command. It's a commandment. It becomes a law. Anything he says is law. Everything in this word of God and everything directed by the spirit of God is law. Bottom line. It says, listen, whoever transgresses and does not abide in the doctrine of Christ does not have God. That means that the enemy is going to come to us in multiple doctrines and multiple belief systems. That's why there's all kinds of religions, all kinds of things, all kinds of belief systems going on. Those are all doctrines. Anything that is written is called a doctrine. Does everybody understand that? 
in the area of somebody's belief systems. We got all kinds of doctrines out there. All kinds of educational doctrines out there. Evolution is a doctrine of itself. Amen? All of these things are doctrines, but they're not doctrines from God. So he says, anyone who doesn't abide in this doctrine, so you got to understand that the enemy's going to try to bring you another doctrine of some sort, wisdom of the world, understanding of the world, to nullify the power of God, because this is how he operates. It says, he who abides in the doctrine of Christ has both the Father and the Son. If anyone comes to you and does not bring this doctrine, do not receive him into your house, nor greet him, for he who greets him shares in his evil deeds. Shares in his evil deeds. Shares in his evil deeds. Does everybody get it? That doesn't mean that, you know, when the Jehovah Witnesses and Seventh-day Adventists and all the other false doctrines come knocking at your door, you want to witness to them. But don't touch and agree with their doctrine. They usually run from our houses anyways, but 1 Timothy chapter 4. In verse 1, 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1. Now the Spirit expressly says that in the latter times, some will depart from the faith, which means disconnected from God's presence, and giving heed to what? Deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Does everybody see that? Doctrines of demons. Well, anything that's not a doctrine of Christ is a doctrine of something else. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. Deceiving spirits, doctrines of demon, causing a disconnect from the presence of God. And they're not able, if they're disconnected from the presence of God, you're disconnected from the power of God. And you're not able to break the power of evil. Doctrines of demons, according to tra tra traditions of men. False religions. False informations. That contradict the word of truth. Like evolution. The lie of always saved. That there's no heaven or hell. The doctrine of pro-abortion, pro-gay rights, pro-feminist, all of these things that are promoting something that's against God's doctrine. They got all kinds of stuff. The earth is square, the earth is flat. There's no angels, there's no this, there's all kinds of stupid stuff that people get involved in and try and promote instead of promoting this. Amen. What does that do? It breaks the power of God in a person's life. Does everybody get this? It break, even the, a lot of the stuff in the education what they're teaching and um, socialism, communism, all kinds of other ways of political arenas in government, to follow. What is it? That's doctrines of demons. It has nothing to do with this doctrine that is against it, but it comes in a form of godliness. But it's not. It's not at all. And again, these doctrines are called letters. And the Bible says that the letter kills and the spirit brings life. And people wonder why they don't have the power to break the power of evil in their own life. Is everybody okay? 1 Corinthians 15. First Corinthians 15. Oh, hallelujah. In verse 33. 
1 Corinthians 15, 33. What's it say? Do not be deceived. That's real simple. Evil company corrupts good habits. Evil company corrupts good habits. How about evil music? How about evil TV shows? Doctrines. All of these things. Again, just because it has a form of godliness doesn't mean it's righteous. Don't be deceived. People you associate will bring impartation to you. Awake to righteousness, he says. And don't what? Don't sin. For some do not have the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. Wow. Evil company corrupts good habits. Causes people to fall into a deep sleep. When people get disconnected. It's called the power of evil. People go into a trance. It's almost like a spell on them. They're fighting for something that they actually have a belief system in, but it's incorrect. Amen. To break a power, you must have power. Does everybody get it? To break the power of evil, you must have the power of God. Amen. That takes being connected to the power of God. Ephesians 6. Breaking the power of evil. You're either promoting it, petting it, encouraging it. You can't ignore it. It's still there no matter what. Verse 10. Ephesians 6, 10. Finally, my brethren, be what? Be strong in the Lord and who? In the power of his might. Be strong. In other words, be strong in the Lord. That means get close to him. Get connected to him. Set him before you in the power of his might. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. or Put on the whole armor of God that you may be what? Able, Able to stand against the trickery or deception of the powers of darkness, devils, and demons. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the principalities, power, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. So you are fighting powers of darkness, unseen realm that is constantly influencing us and impressing on us. And if you don't recognize those things, you'll constantly agree with them and do what they want you to do. And you'll bring a curse on yourself. Sin is a curse. Disobedience is a curse. Blessed are those who are undefiled. So what the enemy wants to do is get you involved in all these goofy doctrines that are out there and all these belief systems so that he can nullify the power of God, nullify the connection and the power of God in your life. Then you can't break the, break the power of evil. Is everybody Okay. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. That way you can battle against the powers of darkness. You know, they've got all kinds of things that are going on and people that are voting for and so forth. In other words, people are going, well, you know, they've got marijuana that, you know, and so forth that the people are approving locally and for medical uses and whatever it is. But most people started with addiction with marijuana. Then it went to pain pills. Then it went to something else. So people will say, well, that's okay. I, you know, whatever. I, they can do whatever they want. Everybody has to work out their own salvation. But let me tell you, people are using marijuana as a recreation, as a curse in their life. And they will wake up in hell. Does everybody get it? Because it disconnects the individual from the presence and power of God, and they will be doing sin. 
when you're connected to marijuana, you're connected to alcohol, you're connected to these things, it's an open door to promote evil. Does everybody okay? Does everybody understand that? Look at how many people started on med pain medication. They got in an accident. They never used, drank, did anything in their lives. And the next thing they know, they're hooked on the pain medication. The doctor says no, and they're on the streets buying it. Or they go to heroin, and then they get into meth. And, and the government provides an additional, uh, an, an extension to your addiction by methadone. Or they provide other things of medication. Does everybody understand? And that person stays addicted. And these things nullify your connection. You can't think right. You may feel good, but it's temporary. Because that's all it's doing is replacing the presence and feeling of God. It's a lie from hell. And it's promoted by the ruler of this world called Satan. So I don't want to approve of anything that Satan proves of. Glory. Ephesians 3. This is what the Word of God says, this doctrine, the one. When I had my visitation from the Lord, one of the first words out of his mouth, he said, this is true. I said, really? This is true? Man, I thought I was told, by, I was told it was nothing but a story. I said, this is true. Why do you think Jesus, the Word of God, became flesh? He became flesh. God came into this natural realm, clothed himself with the word. His flesh was not from dust. His flesh was from the word. He was from the eternal. He was God the Father. Came into this realm, caught, pulled a part out of him, called himself son. Sent him into the world. Because the doctrines were getting nullified. He came to bring a new covenant because the old covenant exposed sin, but they didn't have power to overcome it. So the new covenant was saying, look, it, I'm going to pay the price for your sin and I'm going to leave you the power of my spirit so you can overcome it now if you're connected. Ephesians 3.14. Let's speak it. Is everybody there? For this reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be what? Strengthened with might through his what? Spirit in your inner man, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, and that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height, to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we could ever ask or think, according to the what? The power that works in us and to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Through his spirit in our inner man, connected to the presence of faith. We are grounded in his love. We are established in the knowledge of his truth. And we are filled with his nature. I'm going to say that again. Because we've got to break the power of evil in our lives. It's important. And it's not a one-time break. It's an everyday break. Amen. We are strengthened in our inner man through the connection to his presence in faith. We are grounded in his love and established in the knowledge of his truth. And we are to be filled with his nature. And this all works according to the power that's in us.
Again, so many people have their own belief systems. The only thing I can share is how's it working for you. <laughs> There's a difference between freedom and management and being miserable. Amen. There's a difference between joy. People can get happy over an event, but you can live a life of joy. People get happy when they get a good paycheck, but it's gone and <laughs> very quickly. <laughs> But there's a joy that's unspeakable. You can only express it. And the word tells us that the kingdom of God is peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Spirit, which means in the power of God. And 2 Peter chapter 1. Hallelujah. Second Peter chapter 1. Breaking the power of evil. Again, you first got to know it's evil. <laughs> Second Peter chapter 1. Verse 2. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of, our, of Jesus our Lord. <clears throat> Verse 3. As his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness to the knowledge of him and who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly and great promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. In other words, his divine power given, has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Divi when the divine power, the divine power dwells in the divine nature. It's fed by his presence and knowledge of knowing him. Again, the divine power dwells in his divine nature. That's why the word became flesh. Fed by his presence and knowledge of knowing him. All other things interrupt and nullify his power in us because we must maintain a clean hands and a pure heart. We must maintain an area of thoughts of authority and identity. Remember, the enemy, all of these doctrines mess with your thought pattern. A person will go in confusion. I'll never forget, man, I, I, I've read some of these New Age books. They sound beautiful. They sound like God. But there's one thing you'll miss in all of these New Age books, and that's the name of Jesus. <laughs> but you'll find powers in crystals. You'll find powers in tree trunks. You'll find powers in all kinds of stuff. But they never mention, never mention Jesus because they can't. They'll end up shaking for weeks. Same thing on TV. You find all of these, you know, these, uh, what do you call them, um, house cleaning, demon house cleaning people, whatever, paranormal. It's paranormal, all right. They go in these houses and they sprinkle stuff and they say, oh, the demons are gone. Oh, okay. They never follow up a month later. <laughs> you kidding me? There's no power in sprinkling water. There's no power in anything but the power, the name, and the blood of Jesus Christ. And you got to be connected to power to remove power. <laughs> they crack me up, man. You find these, I'm like, man, just cast the stinking demon out of there. Somebody say in the name of Jesus, I want to jump in that TV. Again, all other things interrupt and nullify the power of Christ. Amen. 
Our thoughts of authority and our identity is like a switch that gets turned on and activated. And then what it does is, what does it activate? It activates the sword of the tongue. So that's why the Holy Spirit brings things to remembrance. But see, if you're not connected to the power, the thoughts are different. If you've got all these other foolish things, it's nullifying. It's always interrupting and nullifying. There's an instability there. The person and people are unstable. And that's what we see happening through the body of Christ. God warned us about all of these doctrines and stuff that would sway people away. Again, the thoughts of authority and identity turn a switch on to activate the sword of the tongue. And Proverbs 18, 21. You don't have to go there. Just write it down. It says, death and life are in the power of the tongue. <laughs> power of the tongue. That's a force of breath in the tongue. So when you take God's word and speak it, it becomes a sword of the spirit. In Acts chapter 1, 8. Hallelujah. Breaking the power of evil. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. But, is everybody there? You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me. Now, he's speaking about receiving the power. It's called the baptism of power. Receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It's called the baptism of power. The other one is repentance. It's the baptism of salvation. That's where people dip you in water. We need the power to maintain salvation and fulfill the mission and the calling, which is birthed out of salvation. You shall receive power. You shall receive power. Now you've got to maintain that power. That's why it's important to connect and praise and worship. Surrender and lift your hands to heaven. 2 Corinthians 3. And sow in the Spirit so you reap life. That means sing the words. No sow, no reap. Second Corinthians three. You know, never look for the feeling first. Amen. When people look for the feeling first, it's nullifying. If you'll believe and receive and look to Jesus, the feeling will come. And the first thing that you'll maintain is a peace. Amen. And you'll get into a place like, who gives a hoot? Amen. All my sorrows and all my concerns and everything is melted away. Because everything melts in the presence of God. Then peace comes, joy comes, and righteousness is expressed. Because you're connected. But when you look for the feeling first, it's offensive. Does everybody get it? I need to get in it. I need to get the feeling. Forget it. Get connected. Accept it. Believe it. Receive it. Acknowledge it. And thank him. And peace comes. Peace comes. Joy comes. Righteousness is expressed. But again, if we're still entangled in all these other belief systems, it's very difficult. Remember, Satan's doctrine is do what I feel like.
You can't allow your feelings to dictate your decisions. You'll be a, purpose, a person out of order all the time. What are the feelings of God? Peace, joy, and righteousness. What did I say to go 2 Corinthians 3? Is everybody okay? Yeah. I know we got a lot of stuff in here today. But we need to get this out and get prepared. Why? Because this stuff is getting ready to be released. And we want to be tied to the rock. 2 Corinthians 3, verse 4. Let's speak it. And we have such trust through Christ toward God, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as being from ourselves, but our sufficiency is from God, who also made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter, but of the what? Spirit, for the letter kills, but the spirit gives what? Gives life. The letter of the old covenant exposed sin, but had no power. Remember that. Jesus came to bring a new covenant. That's why they covered, that's why they had sacrifices of animals. It covered the acts, uh, it covered sins, but it never removed them. But Christ's blood removed the stain of sin and gave us power through confession. But the satanic influencing network is at work with writings, music, and lyrics. These are all associated with the letter kills and the spirit brings life. Words of deception subliminal frequencies creating false doctrines false reality false perceptions false expectations lost love of money depression and disconnect the power of God in our lives Acts 10 Acts chapter 10 Verse 34. Hallelujah. That's a horn of deception, what we just heard. <laughs> Verse 34. Is everybody there? Hallelujah. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, In truth, I perceive that God shows no partiality. But in every nation, whoever fears him and works righteousness is accepted by him. Oh, I love it. Did you hear that? It doesn't matter what nation or nationality or wherever you are. Whoever fears him and works righteousness is accepted by him. So if you don't reverence, honor, and respect him and work righteousness, you are rejected by him. The word which God sent to the children of Israel preaching peace through Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. That word you know, which was proclaimed throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. Again, those who fear God and work righteousness, he's accepted by them. That means there's connection. We are anointed with the Holy Spirit to break the power of evil oppression, of bondage that's placed by the devil on individuals. First of all, we need to be free ourselves. How can you work to free someone else if you're not free yourself? Acts 26. This is our commission. Acts 26 and verse 12. While thus occupied, I journeyed to Damascus with authority and commission from the chief priests. At midday, O king, along the road I saw a light from heaven, brighter than the sun shining around me and those who journeyed with me. And when we all fell, had fallen to the ground, I heard a voice speaking to me, saying in Hebrew language, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? <clears throat> it is hard for you to kick against the goads. So I said, Who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But rise and stand on your feet. 
For I have appeared to you for this purpose, to make you a minister and a witness of both things which you have seen and the things of which I will yet reveal to you. I will deliver you from the Jews, Jewish people, as well as from the Gentiles to whom I now send you. To open their what? Eyes. In order to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God that they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in me. 1 Corinthians 2. The commission of the baptism of power was to break the power of evil. And then one more scripture. Oh, hallelujah. That's why that penetrating prayer booklet is called a penetrating prayer booklet. We get testimonies all over. But again, if you're entangled in all kinds of other garbage and doctrines and belief systems, that's nullifying the power of God in you. We must come out from among them. This is the doctrine we need to follow. Amen? Amen? 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 1. one th for, uh, first five verses. And I, brethren, when I came to you, did not come with excellence of speech or wisdom, declaring to you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I was with you in weakness, in fear, and in much trembling. And my speech and my per preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power, that your faith should not be in the wisdom or doctrine of men, but in the power of what? But in the power of God. Again, the wisdom of man, words of human wisdom, is called letter. It's called letter that kills, but the power of the Spirit brings life. Many still holding on to the worldly wisdom, nullifying the power of truth to break loose from the power of sin and the bondage of evil. I'm going to close in Ephesians 5. Ephesians chapter 5. Breaking the power of evil. You can't break the power of evil if you don't have the power. In verse 1, let's speak it together. Ephesians 5 verse 1. Therefore be imitators of God as their children. Wow. Wow. In other words, be imitators of Jesus. And walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given us himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you as is as fitting for saints. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know that no fornicator, unclean person, no covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of God, Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words or what we call letters, doctrines of demons. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Why? Because they're involved in another doctrine. God looks at it as disobedient. Listen, you can't have, even the word says, in the spirit of mammon, you can't serve two masters. The devil will win. Because God won't allow you to serve him if you're serving another master. The devil wins every time. Amen? Again, let no one deceive you with empty words. 
For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers with them. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. But rather what? Expose these doctrines and stay away from them. For it is shameful even to speak of these things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore he says, Awake, you who have been taken captive and are sleeping. Arise from the dead and Christ will give you light. See then that you work circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because of what? Because of what? Days are evil. We are in perilous times right now. Many people are, have itchy ears, willing to accept anything and believe anything. Don't be deceived by the letter of man that nullifies the power of God. But expose, renounce, repent, and remove so that the curse and sin can be removed and freedom can be brought forth. From bondage there is life and death in the power of the tongue to break these things we renounce the hidden things of shame we repent for those things that we've believed in that were wrong sometimes it took a while to realize what our belief system was incorrect but when you find out about it and it's exposed you repent for it turn away from it break off of it and let it go you know they got this uh what is it this uh, common marriage things now. I don't know. What's it called? The, if they live together, they can be married forever? Common law marriage? I don't know. I've never... Is it in the law, really? There is no such thing. It's man-made doctrine. It's man-made doctrine. Even God gave a certificate to Israel for divorce. <laughs> Why? Because they were worshiping other gods. They had idols. I mean, there's so much. Listen, come out from among the traditions and belief systems of this world and live a higher standard and walk in the power and the truth of God Almighty. Amen? Amen. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed for the power that you release to us and we can break the powers of evil by staying in the connection and the pure flow of your anointing, that we maintain a pure heart and clean hands. Help us to see, help us to hear, and help us to overcome. In Jesus' name. Nobody said amen? amen. Praise God. Prepare your hearts for communion. You can bring any tithes and offerings up you have. <laughs>